there are 15 national parks in the UK and I've decided to see if I can run a marathon in each of them consecutively. So that's 15 marathons in 15 parks in 15 days. Why? Well, like the rest of the world, I've been pretty cooped up for the last 18 months, so I decided to let me go and explore what's on my doorstep, you know, because often that's the last place we go and explore. And also, I'm just really unfit. I don't know if running 15 marathons in 15 days is going to make me fit or just break me, but I'm keen to find out. <laughs> that's a bit dodgy, isn't it? I'm quite nervous about this now. We've got two weeks away from Caroline and Monty. That's the longest I've been away since he was born, really. He's going to miss him so much because he's been there for every bedtime, uh, every nap time, just everything he's been he's been a part of. So um, it's going to be it's going to be different for us all. But it's it's two weeks, and we'll see him at the end. Hey. Bye-bye. <laughs> you know, planning an adventure it really has changed since I've become a dad. Most people said I would want to kind of stay at home more, which is true of course, but actually I kind of became more of a hunter. I almost want to go out and do more impressive things so that one day my teenage kids can uh, think I'm cool. Although I don't think any teenage kids think their dads are cool, so I'm probably wasting my time. <laughs> well, here's the first camp spot. Not the uh, most glamorous of locations. <laughs> now I get to test my tent. Oh no! That is broken. If I cut that to the right size, that'll work. Sorry, whoever's fishing net this was. I think it was my niece's. Sorry, Lucy. to get better at that because I'm fresh as well. It took 20 minutes and I'm fresh. Imagine on day 15, it's going to take me two hours. But by then I'd have nailed the system. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to all of them. It's like trying to choose your favourite child. You can't, you can't, you know, you can't do that. So all the national parks are, in my head, equally special. <laughs> Sitting on the fence there. <laughs> I like the idea of being self-supported. I hate the idea of having like a massive support crew and camper vans and people looking after me. I also wanted to show that actually you don't need these big support crews. Because often that's probably a reason people don't do these sort of challenges because they think they need big crews and people and doctors and masseuses and the whole works. Whereas actually, if you're just up for it yourself, you can actually do it on your own. Well, this is the first night I'm even testing the roof tent out, so I hope it works. Other than the uh, strut failure, I think it's going to be a bit cosy. The only annoying thing is there's a really noisy group next to us. Hmm. Good morning, everyone. I did not sleep that well. I definitely need earplugs. Our neighbours stayed up until midnight and the crows started at about 3.30 this morning, so not had the best night's sleep. 41 minutes since waking up. Had breakfast, I'm ready to go. Just got to pack this up in the next, uh, what's that, 19 minutes. So I've publicly announced that I want people to come and run with me on this one. And uh, I'm really excited for people to come and run with me because normally I do everything by myself and it feels a bit selfish um, but I don't know if anyone's going to turn up <laughs> there's a guy on the campsite who said oh, I'll see you at the start but I'm not running with you <laughs> so maybe that'll happen people will just come to the start and be like what you're going up there are you mad no <laughs> it's my attempt at a Scottish accent sorry 
apologise, Scotland. I've never actually been to the Cairngorms before. I mean, I think I drove through it once, but that doesn't count. It's like people who say they've gone to a country, but they've only been to the airport. <laughs> There's a couple of runners, so I'm not going to be alone. Oh my god, they look serious. He's even got shaved legs. <laughs> oh god. I'm gonna be put to shave, yes. Hey, it's really weird. Nice one, mate. Oh, that's amazing. That's 62%. So we go. Who knows where we're going? I think it's up there and left and then okay. first main right at the crossroads. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys are with me. So, straight on to the uphill. And, uh, feeling good. These guys are proper runners though, putting me to shame already. I think my backpack's too heavy. I'm not sure I needed two litres for 20k. this out. This is Bothy etiquette. Make the fire for the next person. Well done whoever stayed here last. Oh, imagine sleeping here, waking up to that view. Oh look! <laughs> this is exactly what you need in the Bothy. Some baby wipes, some beans, some coffee, some ooh, dodgy looking noodles, and Tabasco. I might leave. An energy bar. There we go. I need that for someone. <laughs> I'm feeling okay actually. It's a bit slower. I mean, you know, four hours 45 in already, and I was hoping to do a five hour marathon, but it's looking like six hours. But the problem is, it's so amazing. I end up stopping and taking photos and exploring. But uh, yeah, I feel good for now. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, don't want to count my chickens, but I think I'm feeling confident. I'm always blown away by the amount of support I get when I do one of these silly little challenges. Yeah, there's loads of people on the internet that are probably saying I'm an idiot, but I tend to ignore those because what's the point? Instead, focus on the people who want to support your idea and you just lead a happier life, you know? Oh, look what I've just come across. <laughs> Someone's written me a little note. That's awesome. Thank you very much, whoever you are. Thank you. <laughs> well, that spurred me on, hasn't it? 44 and a half kilometers. That was annoying. Those last 3K was a real struggle. <sighs> I hope I haven't done that for all the routes because that's half an hour longer than really I needed it to be. <laughs> Which doesn't sound a lot, but when I've got a two hour drive now is just eating into various recovery times. There's a river down here, I wanna go have a swim now. So I got given this old bell by my godparents, Doug and Verla. Doug sadly passed away a few years ago, but he bought this bell of an old fisherman like 60 years ago, and he always had it hanging up in his bar. Now to honor him, I'm gonna ring the bell to signify the end of each marathon. End of marathon one. Right, go go for a swim. Alright, there goes. <laughs> it's this cold. <laughs> oh yeah! Right, I've been driving for three hours now. And uh, we seem to have a bit of a camping problem. Loch Lomond is the park that you're not actually allowed to camp in. I'm tired though. Today, so it's 6 o'clock now, which in my head is about two hours behind what I was hoping. I was hoping to be camped up by 4 o'clock. Found a pretty amazing camp spot, but there are midges. They are starting to bite a little bit. I've got some smidge. But my worry is my tent is not midge proof. I don't know what's happening up there. I think there's some sort of rave. Ugh, I can't sleep. This is 
ridiculous. Well, that was a terrible night's sleep. Maybe got to bed at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. The rave is still happening, it's crazy. It's just people screaming and shouting. And then the midges, they eventually decided they wanted me. And they're everywhere. They are simply the worst thing in the world. I think, Elon Musk, if you're reading this, can you put some effort into getting rid of midges rather than going to Mars? That'd be nice. <coughs> not feeling too great. The midges. So between the midges and the ravers, I mean, is it a rave? Do raves still happen? Is that a thing? Am I showing my age here? <laughs> you know, I've always said it and I'm yet to be proved wrong, but we're far more capable than we give ourselves credit for. Lindsay's come running with us today. She was only going to run one kilometre. Yep. <laughs> and her furthest run up till today is, how far? Four miles. Four miles, and she's going to land up doing a half marathon. That's amazing. <laughs> That's what I like. That spurs me on, you know? And sometimes it's just having someone else support you that makes you realise what you can actually do. High fives on that one. So half marathon. <laughs> this is the meal I made on the first night. It's only vegetables, so it should be okay, right? 48 hours old. That's fine. Famous last words. Just blown away by Lindsay. Further she's ever run is four miles. Did a half marathon. Lap two. This is the first time I'm now running alone. Uh, which in the past I would have welcomed. So I'm a Bit of a grumpy old man, you know. I quite like just going out on my own. But I have to say, I've been missing the company in the last few miles. Oh, that is good. Oh, except the peak is drooping now. Didn't think that through, did I? Hit the bloody 20 mile wall again. You know, I do this every time. I seem to drop the ball after the first day and just forget all the basics. I then get down about it because I think I'm really unfit and I should have trained more, but actually, I'm just malnourished. Even the best athletes in the world can't perform if they've not eaten enough. So I've done 41.6k. I actually don't know how many kilometers are in a marathon. I know it's 42 point something. Is it one or two? 42.195, so 42.2. So I gotta do just under a K. That's over a K. Oh no, 0.2. Oh, nah, it's not my strong point. I'm just gonna run until I think I'm done. Around that bloody bit with my backpack on. What a waste. A lot less gusto on that ring than yesterday. I'm actually going to be having three adventures in one on this one. There's obviously the running adventure, but then there's also the 1600 mile road trip as I explore some of the best roads in Britain. And lastly, I just love camping. I could have stayed in hotels on this challenge, but where's the fun in that? out from camping and I got a message from Caroline from four this morning which obviously didn't come through because we didn't have reception down there. She had to call 999 for Monty last night and go to the hospital. Apparently he was like breathing heavily uh, and shaking and shivering but uh, yeah they did all the tests and apparently everything's fine he may have just had a bit of a fever and sort of not reacted it, to it well but Typical, you know, the first time I go away, he has a picture of him, he just doesn't, he doesn't look good, you know. You know, I've always wondered what I would do if something happened to one of my family members, you know. 
I always said, well, they would want me to carry on and I just never knew how I'd feel. But right now, I 100% want to go home. You know, Monty in the hospital till 5 a.m. Kind of just puts things into perspective a bit. But at least they're okay. You know, if they weren't okay, I'd definitely go home. 100%, no questions. You know, I can always come back and do this any other time. So, it's still in the bars. I'm, I'm going to phone, phone them when they wake up and see how he is. Um, and if he's going downhill and he has to go back to hospital or he's not good, I'll just drive home tonight, you know. So we'll see. But at least I've got some runners today, so I'll take my mind off it, you know. People often ask me why I do these things, and I kind of don't really have a good answer. I feel I'm letting people down because they're expecting this grand philosophical answer that is going to change the world or change them in some sort of way. But actually, for me, it's just more personal. I enjoy pushing myself physically and mentally. I enjoy the retrospective fulfillment I get at the end once I've completed a challenge, even though most of the time it's pretty miserable while I'm doing it. And also, a small part of me enjoys bragging about it in the pub down with my mates. But when the thing I do takes me away from my family when they need me, I do start questioning whether it's worth it, you know? Um, basically said is that it's just his way of fighting off the virus. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe if you were here, maybe I, we would have waited a little bit just to see if the count board helps, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a big relief. It turns out he actually really enjoyed the ambulance ride. I think he thought it was some sort of like fairground ride. <laughs> Turns out navigation might not be my strong point. <laughs> it's been slow going. I now know how it feels when people who walk through jungles say, I only walk three miles in the, in the day. Oh, back on the road. We've just spent what? An hour? An hour in that, in the jungles of the Northumberland. There's a perfectly good road here, boys. Could have just followed that from there. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna do some running. Dinner's going down a tree. I've got my spoon though, it's packed away. Over the next few days, I really started to find my groove. Colonel Mustard and I were loving the road trip side of things. The scenery was so spectacular, it made me realize just how lucky we are to have this all on our doorstep. All the people that came and ran with me, the people who took time off work and drove for hours, they really just were so lovely and it made the days fly by. My spirits were at an all time high. Nothing was going to ruin my mood. The downside of my wide brimmed hat is it flaps all over the place. Flap, 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 flap. I feel like a swan trying to take off from a lake. Marathon number five done. People often ask me what it takes to do decent mileage day after day after day. And I've created the Sean Conway's patented six pistons of endurance. <laughs> Just kidding, it's not patented, anyone can use it. Firstly, there's planning. Yeah, you want to do enough planning so that maybe you build a midge-proof tent. But you don't want to do so much planning that you take all the adventure out of your adventure. The dictionary definition of adventure is to engage in a daring or risky activity. If you do too much planning, you're going to take the daring or risky out of it. The second piston is food. Sometimes I get it right. The legs feel good today. Really good actually. I can't remember what I did yesterday. I had porridge this morning. Maybe that helped. <laughs> but more often than not, I get it very, very wrong. Africa's finest smoked catfish. Reduced because I don't think anyone was buying it. I always buy reduced stuff because I kind of feel if I don't buy it, it's going in the bin. The third piston is hydration. More often than not, you're going to be super dehydrated, so make sure you get enough liquid in you. The fourth piston is sleep. If 
you have too much sleep, then you're going to be behind schedule for the next day. And if you have too little sleep, you're not going to get enough recovery. I'll let you know when I eventually work this one out. The fifth piston is muscle management. And this involves things like massage, rolling, and loosening up tight muscles. This looks well dodgy. I've got a rock right in my hip. It gets really tight on my hip flexors. Oh, it's way better. And lately, I also swear by an ice bath. This one's a bit manky though, to be fair. <laughs> it does the trick, honestly. I, uh, I now swear by them. Also got a couple of beers chilling over there. And the sixth and probably most important of the pistons is mindset. What's motivating you to keep going? What's the reason you're gonna give yourself not to give up when all you wanna do is go home and crawl into bed? So those are Sean Conway's patented six pistons of endurance. Planning, food, water, sleep, muscle management, and mindset. If you can get all six pistons firing on all cylinders, then you'll be flying every single day. But the chances of all of them firing in a self-supported challenge are basically zero. Which is why self-supported challenges are so much harder than supported ones. If I had a full support crew with me, most of those pistons would be taken care of by someone else. Marathon number six. I'm getting more enthusiastic with those bell rings. <laughs> yeah, big turn up today. So, I always get worried when there's a big crowd because inevitably I'm the slowest. I'm a bit of a monkey terrier. I enjoy being a monkey when I'm a monkey because I'm inquisitive, I like breaking things and fixing them and burning my hands and just trying loads of different things. But if I'm a monkey for too long, I get really super frustrated. So to counterbalance that, I need to be a terrier. And the terrier in me needs something to chase. I need some big scary goal to put my energy into. And then it's blinkers on, red mist, all I can see is the finish line and trying to achieve that goal. And for me, doing these challenges scratches that terrier in me. Because if I didn't do that, the monkey would control my life and I'd be pretty miserable because of it. But seven, officially done. Now, about a five hour drive to get to tomorrow's one in Norfolk. This drive is gonna kill me, I think. But anyway, if I'm too tired, I'll just stop and sleep, you know? I was really looking forward to Norfolk because one, it was flat, and two, it has windmills. It's my dream to live in a windmill one day. I keep telling Caroline, please can we live in a windmill? She says no, so we now live in a bungalow. <laughs> oh, stinging nettles. They're everywhere. These are the ankle ones that really nab you, running past. Norfolk was also the halfway point in my marathon. It also landed up being the point at which my knee decided it had had enough of running. How was it? Slow. Seven. No, eight. Seven. I don't know. After the Norfolk run, my knee was in such pain and sitting in a car for six hours to get to the South Downs wasn't making it any better. I really wasn't feeling confident that I could run at all. I knew I could walk the marathon, but I wanted this to be a running challenge, not a walking challenge. Oh, that was a long drive. My mood quickly changed, however, when I arrived at the start point to see so many runners come and join me for the day. And for the next six hours, I forgot all about my knee pain. I did, however, still come in last. Good turnout today, what, 40 people maybe? Somewhere there, which blows my mind. Honestly, I only thought like five or six people would come maximum. And I felt like a toddler trying to control an army. <laughs> Everyone's going home now going, damn you slow. <laughs> Seems Saturday night, busy campsite was a bad idea. It was like a full on rave outside. Stretching is like flossing. I don't do enough of either. In the last few days, I definitely dropped the ball on the whole muscle management side of things. What I really needed was a deep tissue massage to loosen up the muscles pulling on my knee joint. Knee is bad today again. 
I'm very slow now. I was always slow anyway, to be honest with it. <laughs> I feel so bad because I'm way at the back. If you look all the other runners, they're miles away. Oh. The runners were so lovely they decided to stop for me. When I eventually caught up, one of them noticed my dodgy, wayward swinging right leg and offered to give me a roadside massage. Oh, yeah. oh my god, oh, that's, 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 oh that feels amazing. How do you fancy doing another six marathons? <laughs> <laughs> it fascinates me how a little niggle in my knee can completely change my outlook on life. I realised just how miserable I'd been over the last few days with my knee issue as I tried to keep up with all the wonderful runners who had made the effort to come and run with me. The next few days flew by and before I knew it, I was in Exmoor on one of the hottest days of the year. So hot. That's why I got a cotton shirt. That is going to stay wet for a while now. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, that's actually cold. Oh yeah. Oh, that's done the job. Permanent ice bath now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that was close. Nearly stood on a snake. <laughs> I managed to get my camera out and uh, got his tail as he was sliding back into the uh, into the bush. Although it could have been a girl, it could have been her tail. It's hard to tell with snakes. But, uh... <laughs> Whew, don't expect that in Devon, do you? So that felt amazing, but it was a bit lonely. You know? It's the first time since day two that I've had no one to run with on the second half. The first day I felt good and the knees haven't been too bad. I've got no one to share it with. Back in Wales, I felt like I was on the home stretch. In Brecon, I had the most people run the full marathon with me, with 22 runners completing the full distance. And Pembrokeshire boasted the hilliest marathon of all, with nearly 2,000 metres of climbing. Hilly? Very hilly. <laughs> I've even resorted to processed sugar. I never do this. There's something wrong with me. I don't even like it. I don't know why it's called Rupert. Look at rhymes. Rupert the Roller. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but it's important to have a name, I think. Because uh, we're pretty intimate, you know. Tell you what, it's been the best £3.99 I've ever spent. It really has fixed a lot of my little nickels. So is uh, so is that to be fair. <laughs> Although this you still feel the pain, you just care less. Gandhi famously said that whatever you do in life will be insignificant but it's very important that you do it. Going off and deciding to run 15 marathons and 15 parks in 15 days really has no significance on the world at all. However, what it did do, which is something I didn't expect at all, is that this story wasn't a story of endurance, it wasn't a story of adventure, it wasn't a story of how beautiful the national parks are, although it was kind of all those stories. But the real story was actually a story of community, a story of bringing people together who all share one thing in common, going out and exploring one of the best islands on the planet. Has been one hell of a 15 days. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who Came and ran with me. This is for you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. Do you want to wear my hat? Thank you. Hello, you. You miss me. I'm really looking forward to going and sleeping in my own bed. Etc. 
it, we're going camping now, so <laughs> I'd love to wait for a few more days. Ringing the bell for the final time. Done.